I'm asking you right now, Lord Jesus, that you would touch each and every one right now. Uh, just put your, your, your hands on your heart, on your heart, one on your heart and one on your mind. And just, and just agree with me right now. We just break every stronghold off the mind from receiving the knowledge of God. Every stronghold that would come against or try to rise itself above the knowledge of Christ unto me tonight. That which has been deposited on the inside of my mom for you as the father overshadowed her. And, and, and say over my heart, I just receive everything that God has for me tonight to find its place deep inside of my heart. To be implanted and grafted on the inside of me to become me in the name of Jesus and for his glory. And so right now we just decree that over you and I bind every hindering force that would try to come against that knowledge mm -hmm. that God wants to impart I break it mm -hmm. off of you right now in the name of Jesus may mm -hmm. this zoom uh, be held in captive in the secret pavilion of the father's heart uh, guarded and protected for him and for his use and for his glory alone in Jesus mighty and holy and amazing and sanctified and glorious and strong name amen and all who agree amen amen all right, so mom, a lot of you lilies know that mom's like the mother, Amen. spiritual mother over the lilies, okay? So just let her rip. <laughs> a lot of lilies, San Diego and Arizona, they love mom. Some of you on here, I don't have very many on here, but some of you know her, some of you don't. That's okay. Um, but this is mom. All right, mom. Hi, this is mom. I love you so much so much she's been can i just say i just have to honor you this woman of god my dad too my dad's going to be 80 in august they've been preaching the gospel since 1980 right mom 1980 yeah, traveled many, all over the world my dad got saved in 85 but traveled all over preaching the gospel still and my dad's still preaching the gospel gonna be 80 and he works in the stone quarries so my mom is amazing she's been preaching tent revivals and so I'm just so proud of her and I love her so much. She loves Jesus with all her heart. And that's where us girls get it from, right, Berlin? <laughs> all right, Lorena, can you hear me? Oh, there she is. Right, Lorena, come on now. <laughs> all right, mom, love you. Love you too, thank you. He just wants to know if you love him. He wants to know if you love him. Yeah, it's easy to say it. It's easy to speak it out, especially in a good time when you're feeling the anointing and the power of God. And, and you just say, oh, Jesus, I love you. But do you really love him when the times are hard? Do you really love him when things aren't going your way? Do you really love him when the bills are overdue and there's no way to pay them that you can see? Do you really love him? When he can't give you what you really want. Do you really love him when you can't feel his presence and you don't know if he's any place in the room because you can't find him and months and months and months have gone by and you're dry and dry and you still can't find the presence of God. Do you love him at those moments? Just asking. <laughs> Do you really want him? Because everybody wants a rhinestone Jesus today. They just want a Jesus that can sprinkle down gems and a little gold dust now and then and give the neighbor some gems while the other one's suffering and, and starving and everything else. But the neighbor up the road got the gems, so, you know, Praise God there. Let me speak this word to you tonight, ladies, watchers of the kingdom of God, the ones that God has entrusted with his power and his anointing and his blessing. Let me talk to you tonight, women of God that are going to raise up the next generation. Somebody better talk to me. I don't like to be alone tonight. Hallelujah. I want to tell you something. God's looking yes, for girl. watchers on the rim. God's looking for watchers on the wall. God wants to know if you love me enough. How about giving up the things there that I asked you to give up a while back there? You know what I mean? If you love God enough, how come you're not leaving the things that you love for me? Come on now. Amen. If you love me, how come there's still a little stash in the back room back there of the things that you want to keep mm. for the flesh? 
Jesus. Oh. If you love me, how come mm. there's still a little thing back there that you have to go and see every now and then when I'm not looking? Hello, somebody talk to me tonight. Let me tell Jesus. you something. God sees everything that you do and everything that you say. And God is saying tonight, yeah. do you really love me or do you just want me to be a rhinestone cowboy in your life? You just want me to give you little things now and then? And you want me to take care of you? You want me to give you presents? You want me to meet this need and meet that need? But when what about when I have a need, Jesus says? What about when I have a need? Are you going to meet the need that I have when I want you to spend time with me? When I want you to take a little bit and go and talk to somebody that I've been working on their heart for? How about when you just drive by them and don't think you need to say anything because you're too busy or they're maybe not the right kind of people that you might need to say something to because after all, we have to keep on going down the road that we want to go down. Man, this ain't even anything that God gave me until just now. Jesus said, do you love me? Yes. And Peter yes. said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said again, well, then get out there and feed my lambs. Then Jesus said again, well, do you love me? Hmm. And Peter sort of got a little upset. He said, well, Lord, you know I love you. What, what's, what's the beef? What's the deal? How come you keep asking me, do you love me? He said, go feed my lambs. And then Jesus said the third time, do you really love me? Funny that Jesus had to ask him three times when he was the son of God. And he was a disciple. And he stuck closer than a brother, so to speak, right next to John, which happened to be on the breast of Jesus. But let me tell you something. Are you leaning on the breast of Jesus or are you just in with the pack tonight? Are you leaning on the breast of Jesus for anything and everything? Have you sold out to him? Or are you just with the rest of the pack that's just hanging around? Just seeing what we can get and seeing what's going on and seeing what he's going to do next and seeing where we're going to end up next. And let's just see some of the miracles. Let's not get into the nitty gritty and the dirty stuff. My God, my God, do you love Jesus tonight enough to suffer and do what it takes to feed the world that God has called you to? Do you love Jesus enough to lay down yourself and die? Is there anybody dying tonight? Is there anybody mm. killing themselves off tonight? Jesus. Is there anybody saying, here I am, <laughs> Lord, send me. Boy, that's a big one right there. We feel so good when we say that. Tears and all. Well, let me tell you something. When you pack your bag and you take the first step on the road, uh, tell me how it is then, baby. Tell me how it is with any of our roses and, and, you know, thrills and, woo, gonna go go for Jesus. Woo, 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 let's get going. Let me, hey, how much, ha, 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 hey, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, women of God that want to serve the most high God, that love him with all your heart. There is a cost to pay to serve the living God. There is a cost to pay for your call. There's a cost to pay for your purpose. And there's a cost to pay for your assignments. It ain't free. His wasn't free. <clears throat> it comes Jesus, everything. Yes. Stop and think for a minute, get it? <coughs> Did it not cost him his very life so you could be free? Did it not cost him everything so you could be free? Did it not cost him everything so you could do the great things that God has called you to do? Did it not cost him everything he was, everything that he could be? Because as a son of God, before he came from glory, it said that he just robed himself. Hey, 
He just robed himself from his glory. He just robed himself from everything that he was, his majesty, his power, his authority, everything that he was in heaven. He just robed himself so he could be, my God, so he could become as a child, a baby in a manger with animals, <laughs> not in a palace, in a manger with dirty animals. Hello. So he could grow up and become the savior of the world just for us. And you want to serve God. Well, are you rising tonight? Are you rising to your call? You know what the call means in, in the original language? It's a military term, meaning a soldier is ready to go out into action immediately the, when the signal is given. Are you ready to go immediately into the field if God called you? Have you prepared yourself to go where God has called you? Or have you just decided, well, they say that's what I am, so I guess uh, God will just have to make me into that. Uh, hello? You're not going anywhere, if that's what you think. you got to prepare. It takes years to prepare yourself for the call that God has given you. Yes. You don't just get a prophecy one night and then the pulpit the next day. Uh-uh. There is a preparation, a call, a dying, a resurrection, a burial to put you back together so you can even be useful for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, yeah. Are you rising to your purpose? What is your purpose? Why do you exist on the earth? What is really your purpose? You can have family. You can have children. That, that God blesses us with that. But what is really your purpose individually as a child of God? What is your purpose on the earth today? Because when it's all said and done, the only thing that's going to matter is when you stand before Jesus and he says either, well done, thou good and faithful servant, or I never even knew you. You want to know what mine's going to be? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You know why? Because when you've been to hell and back and you've been stripped of everything and you've been taken advantage and you've been in the gutters. And I, I'm talking about the gutters of the world. I'm talking about the gutters that the devil tries to put you in so you don't know what your assignment is and will never ever find out, hopefully, or his kingdom will suffer if you ever do. And the gutters that God put, oh, Jesus, you mean God puts us in gutters? You better believe it to see what's in your heart. He took the children yeah. of Israel around the long way to see what was in their heart. God's going to do the same thing with you, women of God. He's going to take you around the long way to see what's in your heart. What's in your heart tonight? Yes. Hallelujah. I wish this was a better word, but you know, this is what God's saying to you. I need to know because where I'm going to take you, ladies, women of God, warriors, in the kingdom where I'm going to take you, I have to know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you're trustworthy, that you're not going to run, that you're going to stand on the front line and look the enemy in the eye and go wrestle with him eye to eye and beat him. So God has to know what's in your heart. You think you're going through trials and stuff now? It's because God wants to know what's in your heart. Because he loves you so much and he wants to use you so greatly. But he can't until he knows where you stand. Because words are easy to say. A heart tingle when the anointing and presence of the Holy Ghost is there is easy to say. But when you're out on the line between you and the devil. And you're fighting for your last breath. Let me tell you something. God needs to know are you going to stand or are you going to run? Jesus. God needs to know that you're going to stand because what God put in you is a warrior and warriors yes. don't back down. 
And Amen. warriors take the hard times more than the good times because they're built by the Holy Ghost to do that. Amen. Amen. They're built yes. by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Your assignment, mission, or position. What do you want? What do you feel God's called you to? Is it that irrelevant to you? Is it that important? Because see, when an assignment <laughs> comes death, wow. Jesus said, unless a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Do you know what it means when a corn of wheat goes into the ground and dies, but if it abides alone, it produces much fruit? Between the time that you die and the time that you produce fruit, you're suspended between the two. You haven't got there yet, and you haven't made it to the other side. You see what I'm saying? You are suspended. So when that suspended time... It's the time that you really decide that you're going to die to everything that is not Christ-like in your life. That you're going to die, and if it takes you a million deaths, you're going to die. And if you got to die tomorrow, yeah. you're going to die. And if you got to die next month, you're going to die. And if you have to die right after you died, you're going to die again. Amen. 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 Fires if you're going to work in the field for Him, because I'll tell you something. He's coming back, and it's all nice and joining you know, you know, we're going to go to heaven. Well, you know what? I ain't going to heaven. I refuse to go to heaven. I'm not done down here yet. There's a world going to hell. When that world going yes. to hell is more important than what you want and what you want to do, then that's when God can begin to say, all right, then come and talk to me, and we'll work something out, because then I can use you. When your things begin to die out and his things become more important, that's when God can begin to use you. It's all nice that God called you to the ministry. It's a beautiful thing. But he never tells you about the backside of it. No. <laughs> he never tells you about the backside of it. He never tells you what it's going to take to get from A to B. He just says, if you take one step in A, you're going to be all right. Well, when you get to B, you know you're going to be all right because you just survived all kinds of stuff to get to B. Amen. Somebody out there knows what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You see, you are the vessel that houses the treasure of the ages. Don't ever. Ask God to show you his glory. Don't ever ask God to send the rain again. You want to know why? You are the glory. Look in the mirror. You're made in the image and likeness of God himself. You are the glory. The glory is encased on the inside of you. You don't need God to send the glory. You don't need to see God's glory. Look in the mirror and you'll see God's glory. It's you. It's in you. It's always been in you. Nothing that God has is outside of you. It's all on the inside of you by the Holy Ghost. Jesus. You don't need the rain to come. The rain's on the inside of you. All you got to do is begin to pray in the Holy Ghost and the rivers will start flowing. You got more water on the inside of you than you'll ever have if it rains. Yes. We've fallen for all these gimmicks. You don't need the Holy Ghost to come to a servant. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this service. Just don't get in our way. You don't need to ask the Holy Spirit to come to a service. You're it. You brought him. All of the Godhead bodily is on the inside of you and your spirit. You're not going to get any more. You have all of it. Begin to see yourself the way God sees you. God already sees you. What do you think Jesus said is finished? His job was done? Yes. He finished everything so you can begin. He finished you. 
He put you together. He, my God, help me here. Holy naya, God. Naya, naya, naya. Ah, he already put you together with everything you're ever going to need. Stop looking for it on the outside. Jesus. Stop playing the gimmicks that the church is saying. Send me the rain. You don't, you got more rain in you if you would just use it. That would flood the whole using continent. Yes. You got to realize ah. you that God has supplied the grace that the Father sent through the Son by the Holy Ghost is deposited in you. Hey! Ephesians chapter 1 verse 6 says he has seated you in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And everything from the book of Acts on is in Christ Jesus. You are. You are. I want you to tell yourself, I am. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am all that I, I am. Need because God lives on the inside of me. The same spirit that raised Jesus, stop and think for a moment. The same Holy Ghost that raised Jesus from the dead. Now, Jesus was dead. He was dead, dead, dead in the bowels of hell. And the same Holy Ghost that raised him from the dead, what's he do? He dwells in you. And he will quicken or make alive your mortal body. Why is there sickness in the church of God? Hey! Because we don't know who we are in Christ. We don't know that we are. Yeah! That we are a vessel. Yeah. You're a vessel for the presence and the power of God. Don't ever pray for the presence and the power of God to come on the outside of you. Why would you want it on the outside when it's on the inside in its fullness? Why? See, we get wrapped up in all these cute little quotes ah. that we hear. And we and and you know, you want you want to know something? <laughs> you really want to serve God? Learn how to become a worshiper. Because if you can worship God, yes. you can it. Because that's where it starts. Yes. Intimate worship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Intimate worship. When you become a worshiper, God can use you. You know why? Because he knows your heart. Because he can trust you. You say, well, doesn't God know my heart now? Sure, that's why I'm preaching to you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, preaching uh, to you because he knows your heart he knows everything he knows more about you honey he put you and knitted you in your mother's womb before anybody even knew you were in there god put you in there and you, all your parts are wrote in the by god in his book you were thought of before he made the foundation of the world you were healed you were prosperous you were wealthy you were put together. Your assignment. Everything was done before the foundation of the world was ever laid. Before Genesis 1-1 ever was even thought of. You were. You were. Jesus. You were. And you need to realize that you are. Get away from all this stuff yeah. that, that tries to tell us and name us and, and get the... They want the rhinestone Jesus, you know. They want him to ride on his parade horse and you know give him some gimmicks you know and shine a little bit over here in the corner for him and shine over there for him and do this and do that i mean whatever happened to just the plain old Jesus walking down the dusty road what happened to just jesus what happened to yeah. just jesus who yeah. wore the long robe and the dirty sandals and the dirty feet what happened to jesus Get back to Jesus and the way he was. He's enough. Trust me. He's enough. You want to see Jesus? Get in the Gospels and look at Jesus because he didn't ride no rhinestone cowboy horse. And he wasn't no rhinestone cowboy that everybody's trying to make him into. He was just Jesus. He walked a dirty, dusty road to get to people that needed him to heal, to deliver, to set free. Guess what? You're gonna come down a long dusty road with an old robe on too, why? Because you're a disciple of his if you really love him. Back to the same story. 
Do you love him enough to wear the dirty robe and the dusty sandals and walk down a dirty road if he tells you to? Yeah. Are you ready to serve God? Are you ready to really serve God? Are you ready in your life to really lay down everything that'll cost you? You know what it costs? Everything you have, everything you are, everything you will be. But is the love strong enough to take you to where God might want to take you? Because eternity is the only thing that matters. It's nice to have a family. It's nice to have kids. But in, through it all and in it all, eternity better be on your mind. Because that's all that's going to count. Amen? Amen. That's all. Amen. So I want to ask you a question. Does your perfume fill the whole room where Jesus is? You remember the woman with the alabaster box? She brought the most costly perfume. Yes. Out on his feet washed his feet with her hair well, let me tell you something that's what i'm talking about the woman could have just went in there with a little bit of perfume she got on the corner for 20 bucks you know an imitation type thing and went in there and said you know i don't really want to spend a lot of money because it's just jesus you know so went in there and throwed the cheap perfume on his feet and brushed around a little bit with a rag and said well i did my part well what part are you going to play in this story what part are you going to do? Are you going to give the real thing? Are you going to give the real stuff? Or is your perfume cheap? Is your perfume something that you think, so, oh, well, it's an extra bottle I have, and I don't even like it, smell of it. So we'll just give it to him, and we'll douse it on him and play act just a little bit there, you know, so at least we're doing something in church, you know what I'm saying? Let alone just go. At least we're just doing something in the church so we can say we did something. Oh, is your perfume costly today? Does it cost you something that you don't want to give up? Does it cost Whoa. you something that's very precious to you? Which, you know what? You know what's the most precious thing to Jesus is your life. The most precious thing to Jesus is your love your real love. The most precious thing to Jesus is when you sell out and really mean, here I am. And when he takes you away from your family and you sell your house after you get it paid for two months, after 16 years of paying on it. And God says, oh, by the way, I want you to sell your house. I want you to give up all the cars I want you to give up all the things I've given you and I want you to get rid of everything. I want you to get a motor home and I want you to go to Rome, Georgia. Then you go to Rome, Georgia for a few years. And then he says, well, I want you to go home. Ha! Well, we lived 25 years in California. I don't want to go to California today. He said, no, I want you to go home. We said, well, we lived in Florida. I guess that wouldn't be too bad. God said, no, I want you to go home. And he said, I, my husband said, I hope you don't mean New York because we ain't ever going back to that horrible place. Well, guess what? That's just exactly what he meant. So I call my sister on the phone. I'm going to tell you about cost, baby. I call my sister on the phone trying to complain to her. She says, well, what if God wants to do a great work with you back there? 360 degree turn in a split second. And we decided, hey, New York don't sound too bad. We've been in New York going on three years. And my family, you know where my family is because you're right there with them. You know where my heart is because it's there with them, but it's here, here too. So let me ask you a question. You want to give up something? You want to give up everything? Because God said that if you give up houses and lands and brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers, you get a hundredfold now and or left to come eternal life. But let me ask you, what if God said, sell your house? What if God said, you move and you don't know where you're going? What if God said, you sell everything in your home because I'm not going to tell you where you're going yet, but take the first step and then we'll go that way. What if God told you to give up everything that you loved and everything that you wanted and all of your family and all of your children and all of your grandkids that happen to be getting older 
without us. Excuse me, I'm not complaining. I'm trying to make a point here. Don't ever say that God will never, ever tell you to give up everything and leave what you love because he will, because you've got to love him more than you love things. Yes. More than you love your children, more than you love your grandchildren, more than you love anybody. Obedience to the son of God will get you the throne room in heaven. Jesus, come on, somebody. Yeah, oh, hallelujah. He, 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 he. Yes. hallelujah. Jesus, hallelujah. Yes. Give me a moment while I praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you, Jesus. Lord. And don't think that God <laughs> don't think that once you get Thank settled glory. for a year or two, God's not gonna yeah. uproot you. Because yeah. he's gonna uproot us because he spoke to me last month and said, Oh, by the way, you're moving to Tennessee. Oh, really? That's nice to know. You know what I mean? At 75 and 80, you know, it's just it's just nice to know you're going back across the country with nothing, 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 nothing. Thank you, Jesus. God just bless these women. <laughs> they have a yeah. heart for you. I ask you to crush them. I yes. ask you to crush them. I ask you right now to give them such a burden that they can't stand it. I ask you to break them right now. Break them, oh God. Break them till they're on their knees with snot all over the floor, crying out to you in repentance. And just break them, Lord God. That's my prayer for you, ladies. Get broken by the Holy Ghost, and then you'll come alive. And then God can do great things with you, and he'll give you everything you ever dreamed of. And he'll also give you the ministry that he promised to give you. But only then, when you're broken, can you come back up alive and be useful for the kingdom of God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Julie? Thank you, Father. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank God, you, Lord. make us worthy. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let our election and our call be sure. Thank you, Lord. Are you sure? <laughs> Are you sure you want yes. it? Are you sure now that you want it? It costs you Lord. everything you have and everything Amen. you are. You want the glory of Amen. God? You want the presence of God in a, in a way that like you've heard all these pastime preachers and ministers Amen. that are great? And the Lord, you want that call and you want that kind of anointing and power like that? Die. Boots on the ground. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> mm. Lord, I just thank you for you. Thank you for all that you are. I just keep thinking of the alabaster box, like our most precious things that are most precious to us, and laying them at his feet. And when mom yeah. said that some come with their yeah. cheap perfume or something they just bought, and then a clearance rack, and they just come and they bring it to him, it just crushed my heart. Yeah, he's so much more worthy. He's so much more worthy of your most valuable thing, yes. <laughs> your life, who you are. <laughs> and I don't ever want to come to him, his feet, and give him mm -hmm. something that has no value, something that has didn't cost me anything. You know, it just. <laughs> Oh, Lord, we love you, Lord. Lord, may we be a bride who honors you. May we be a bride who honors you all of our days. May we never take for granted who you are, what you have done. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. May it become our pleasure, our pleasure to give you everything not ours anyway everything belongs to you 
Oh, I want to make sure I love you like I need to. Thank you, Jesus. Just pray that you show all of us those things that are in between. Like mom said, when we're suspended in the air between the death process and the week, when we're in between that suspended in the air, that you will reveal to us what's in the way. Yes. What you want to kill off, what you want to take. No. Yes. I put down, we need to know that we are ready to die. We need to know. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. The greatest thing. Thank you, Father. In your life. Thank you for this word. Yes. Thank you. May it find its place deep within us, deep within the core of who we are, seeping down the insides of us. May it stay for all eternity and never leave. May it become us. Like I prayed from the beginning, may it become us. May this word become us. Okay. May we say, I am, like mom said, I am. Because we, you are the glory and the lifter of our head, Lord. You are the glory and the lifter of our head. Yes. And we would do it a thousand, a million times over if Jesus asked us to, because he's the most important, he is the important thing in our lives. Yes. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I also keep getting that scripture in Romans, Romans 8, that says that the earth is groaning mm -hmm. in travail, awaiting the manifestations of the things of God. Yep. And I feel like what mom was talking about, how we already been built from the inside out. The problem is we're looking for, for something out here. We're yes. looking for something out here to fix it, to, to but we have everything on the inside of us. The Bible says that he's blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He's given us every spiritual blessing that pertains to life and godliness. It's on the inside of us. When we're in Christ, when we're in him and he is in us, it's just like Jesus when he said, if you've seen the Father, you've seen me. I'm in him and you're in me. In John 17, when he prayed his prayer, the real prayer of Jesus, when he prayed the prayer to the Father, that we would understand and know the union of heaven, the glory of the Father in us, as you Shabbat take it as he is in us, as we are in him. Jesus prayed that. He said, let them know that they, that they are in us. Let them know they are in us as I am in you. And this is what the glory is. The hope of glory, Christ in us, right? The hope of glory. And so what mom was saying is so profound. It just, it just, just like blows you away when you really think about the divine truth and the deep truth in that, that everything is on the inside of us. Everything, kingdom of heaven that is within us. And the king always comes with his kingdom. He's clothed in his kingdom. He's in his kingdom. He always comes with his kingdom. It's so amazing that I always say, if you turn me inside out, it's the whole kingdom. If you to turn you inside out, it would be the whole kingdom of heaven. Yes. So, Father, mm. we thank you. Word. May it become us. Yes. Establish it in us. Yes. yes. 
Come on, bless mom, Lord. Strengthen her. Yes. Thank you for the cost. I thank you for a life laid down. Yes. I thank you that I've grown up to watch her bleed for you, Lord. I've witnessed her bleeding and still going. <laughs> still preaching your gospel. Yes, Lord. Still loving you. Still encouraging others. Still serving my dad. Yes. Oh, she's bleeding. Sometimes profusely. Nobody to help the bleeding stop. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the cost. I thank you. I thank you for the sacrifice that doesn't go unnoticed by her children. It doesn't go unnoticed by her children. Amen. And the time she wanted to quit, she didn't. What an example. What an example. Bless her, Lord. Strengthen her. Strengthen her. Strengthen my dad. Yes. Increase the joy. Keep us hidden forever until you reveal what you want to reveal. Keep us yes. in your heart. Keep us nameless for you, Lord, that your name is the only name that will ever be glorified. I love you, Lord. If anybody has anything they want to share, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm done. I'm undone. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. I feel like we just need to close it out because there's a stillness just so you guys can be with the yeah. Lord. Yeah. I really feel a holiness yeah. on this. And I just I would I don't want to want to yeah. talk. I just <laughs> I just want to honor him what he's doing right now. Yes. Thank you. Can I say a, a prayer request? Yeah. Um, Jerry's cousin was in a really bad car accident this morning and they're not able to wake her up. So I just wanted to say a prayer request tonight for her. Her name is Brooke. 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 And she, um, is still unresponsive as of 3 a.m. this morning, but she's alive. She didn't have her seatbelt on and she was ejected from the vehicle. Lord, we just lift up Brooke to you, Lord. Yes. Lord, that you would reach her where she's at, Lord. We just breathe a breath of life into her, Lord. Lord, that you would spare her life, Lord. Lord, that your yes. healing virtue would reach her right now. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Brooke, Lord. hear the voice of the Lord. Hear the voice yes. of the Lord and wake up. Hear his voice. Hear his wake, voice. Up. Brooke. Brooke. wake up. Wake up. Speak to you, Brooke. Wake up. God wants to make you a river. Wake Not a brook. God wants to make you a river. Oh, no, no, yeah. come alive come alive wake up hear the voice of the lord hear the voice of the lord may god impart and plant a testimony in you testimony to live in you life Life, life to you, life to you, life to you. Nana Motole Lava. Thank you, Lord. Body, you want, body, you want to live. 
body you want to live. Speak mm. life over your body. Jesus. Amen. Come forth. Come forth. Visit her. Visit her unconscious, Lord. You are there. And I thank you, God. You are there. Jesus. We go to Bosha. We speak over her body. Any residue yes. from the accident, any any what's left damaged, anything, Lord Jesus. We we ask you, Lord, Hallelujah, for a creative miracle in her body. Restore everything, Lord. Let her be a walking miracle, a walking testimony of your goodness in Jerry's family. A walking testimony. Yes, Lord. Thank you for that, Lord. Lord, that you minister to his family, that you minister to those around yes. her loved ones, Lord, that you administer to them right now. The, the ministry of hope. Yes. That send forth the ministry of hope. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you, Lord. Jesus. Anybody else have anything? I just want to say that I know my sister is probably going to get upset with me, but I just want to say. That it's my sister Lorena and Nathaniel pretty soon, 26th anniversary. Oh, wow. And they're going somewhere for two weeks. I won't say where, but I just, I want to just you bless can. them. I can't, okay. They're going to Tahoe. They were going to Alaska, but they, they were going to get the shot or whatever. And they wouldn't, they refused to get the shot. You know how they're doing That's the shots funny. now. But I just love my brother-in-law Nathaniel so much and I love Lorena and I just hi Nat I love you I just want God to just bless them so tremendously and so deeply I just want to agree bless them bless them. I love my, my sisters and I know bless them Lord I just I know yes. this is going to be a special bless. trip I feel it in my bones because he diverted them to oh, their going to Tahoe. I just want to by pray faith. for financial increase, but also by I want faith. to pray <laughs> by faith. I want to yes. pray for their 26 years. I was like, I keep thinking of Woo! two six, you know, remember 66, you know, it's just like 26. And I've been studying 26 and it means so much. Yes. And so, all right, let's pray. I'm sorry. I just think, Lord, we just agree right now together. Lord, that you would supernaturally bless Nat and Lorena, Lord. Lord, I thank you that they've been together for 26 years. I thank you that you have just knitted them so tightly in the soul and in the spirit. And Lord, yeah. it's like they're still in love, Lord, and I thank you for that. And I just ask that you bless this trip. I thank you for providing even before they go. I thank you, Lord, for opening the doors. I thank you for your spirit and your presence being upon this trip. Lord, I'm asking you that you would even heal those areas, Lord Jesus, that have felt like a weakness or have felt like a weariness, Lord, on even for working. And on that, Lord, this, that weariness would just be diminished, Lord, that you would give them complete rest, Lord, that they would have intimate time with you in such a deep way. And Lord, I thank you. I ask that you strengthen their bodies, Lord, and prepare them for this trip, Lord, spirit, soul, and body. Prepare them, Lord. And I just thank you for who they are in the kingdom. I thank you for all the things you're doing with Lorena and with Nat by putting these products together, Lord, the Esther line and all that for Lily, everything that you're doing, Lord Jesus, so much, Lord. You've given her supernatural insight and wisdom into your heart for the things that the earth is going to need. And so, Lord, I thank you for that, Lord. And I just ask that you continue to bless the work of their hands. I ask God that you continue to open up doors that close their mind of what you're fixing to do. I thank you for divergence and convergence. I thank you for both that they're married to one another. That Lord Jesus, that divergence and convergence will become full. It's like a full reality of what these two things mean, Lorena. Um, 
I'm the, I feel the Lord wants me to prophesy. They're, those two words are marrying each other. It's like, and they're producing offspring. Uh, those two words, I'm not sure that they're producing an offspring. And the Lord said, it's time for the offspring. It's time for the offspring. And you're going to begin to spawn, spawn these things. It's a spawning like the salmons do when they spawn. You're, it's like a spawning and it's mul divine yeah. multiplication. And I see a lot of double eggs inside of a single sack. Like, da -da 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 -da. And it's like, and it's so fast. It's so fast and vast. I even heard the Lord say so fast and vast. And so um, he doesn't even need you to be expectant. This is what he's saying. I don't, he doesn't even need you to be expectant because it is what it is. He's already said it. It's already done. And you just need to stand there and receive and watch that it's marvelous in your eyes because it is coming. And the Lord wants me to encourage Nathaniel and tell Nathaniel that you will surely see what I have said and it, you will see it and you will see it clearly because it's coming. It's nigh unto you. You will see it as your eyes right now you open your eyes and you see and you're looking at Lorraine and you see your wife you will see it very clearly very soon in Jesus name amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. I believe that that is absolute it's yeah. like double talk it's like it's all, it's all I'm hearing it's all I'm hearing is it's time, time. yes it's been very pro yeah. love you yes yeah. Yeah. love you love you I love you so much, Aunt Lori. I love you. I love Amy. you all. I love you, Uncle Nat. Love, <laughs> love, love you, Uncle Nat. Love you, Nat. Love you, Nat. I miss Nathaniel so much, too, man. <laughs> Okay, we said hi. Yes, okay, we, said hi. we love him very much. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I sent you guys honey too. So you got a box, not the bag coming. All okay, I'm so excited. Yeah. 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 Love Praise you. the Lord. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Love you. Gary misses you guys too a lot. <laughs> awesome. Mm -hmm. We'll see each other soon. Okay. Anybody else have anything they want to share? It's been very intense. <laughs> it's been glorious. Merlene. May everything you see just open up and explode with excitement. Mm, I love you, Merlene. I love that we get to be on you. here. Thank you, Jesus. You know, Merlene, you, these are like how many generations wow. on here? Four, because Serenity's on here. We have four generations. Amen. Amen. And God's been so faithful. Everything that we fought for. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Mama. Welcome. We learned from her. Yeah. Love you, baby. Love you. I love you, Grandma. Love you, Dad. Good to see you. Love you, Mama. I love you too. You do something when you preach. Thank you. Huh? You stir something in me when you preach. You want to do? You stir my destiny. Mm. Respond. Yeah, because it's not it's not just one, it's the whole family that God's after to preach the gospel and to fulfill their destiny and purpose. It's the whole family. Hello. The whole Lily's family. Hello, Destiny. Hello, Melissa. Y'all here and your grandma and mama. Yes. What's up? That's your heritage, right? That's the there. whole Lily's family. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be good to see you, girls. You too. See the babies. That'll be good. Yes. That'll be. Yeah. Grandpa can't wait. Mm. Jesus. So y'all pray for uh, Linda and I, because we're going to be, um, I'm not sure, Delphi, are you graduating too? 
Are you, are you in the academy yet? Okay, I wasn't sure. No, everyone, you know what? God keeps sending people asking me that question so much lately. I'm like, <laughs> I'm praying about that, actually. I see you so much, so I wasn't sure. But um, so Amber was going to be graduating with us, but she had to skip a, a couple semesters or whatever, but she got married. But Linda and I are graduating on 8 8. And oh, I think cool. um, Holly on here, she's graduating. Mary L. Tate is graduating from Ascend Academy. So keep us all in prayer because we're getting ordained. And so, again, not for me, the first time for some, but um, yeah. and I have to release the four square license that I have. So, the Lord, it's a transition for me, but just pray for us because, man, it's exciting. Yes, so, we're having is. a a dinner they're having a dinner for all the graduates on the 6th of august and it's um it's a formal dinner and it's just for the graduates they have gifts for us and stuff like that i guess and then the graduation's on the 8th but what's interesting about that is before i left san diego a lot of you lilies on here know but my sisters and all you brought laura you were there on 8 8 2008 when the Lord left and then I had that encounter and and he told me to leave and lay it all down and go to Arizona. It was on 888. And now I'm going to be ordained by a ministry of the bride on 88. A ministry that I trust that really truly wants Jesus and that's not in it for themselves. Yep. So yeah. finally. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> hey, finally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. had to go through three or four of them before it but I man know, did i right? strike gold my goodness <laughs> we struck gold didn't we <laughs> yes <laughs> yes oh, man god is so good i'm going from four squares to a hole all in one hey <laughs> Jesus, oh, I received that. <gasps> wow. yeah. Four yes. to a hole. That's ah. pretty good, Merlene. That's <laughs> that's what the Holy Ghost just said. <laughs> pretty good. Man. Wow. Yeah. Woo. Wow. That's so good. <laughs> so good. Hey, gotta preach. Come on. Wow. <laughs> Hi, I'm Serenity. Grandma loves you so much. Hey, Hi, Serenity. Do you have something you want to say to us? We're all here loving Jesus. Well, Mom told me to come here because she wanted me to say bye. You want to say bye. something to us? <clears throat> Hi, beautiful. Huh? <clears throat> you know, a lot of these ladies heard your your word from the Lord that you did on the video. Remember huh? when you, God healed you from your bad dreams? Yeah. Can you just tell your grandma that you love her? I love you, grandma. I miss you. I miss Where, you where's Essence in bed? Come here. She just She's crazy. <laughs> Hi, baby. Hi. Grandma loves you. Oh. Hi. <laughs> He's crazy for Jesus. Hi, nieces. <laughs> I love you all so much. Hmm. He looks just like her auntie. <laughs> <laughs> 25 years ago. <laughs> 31. Anybody have anything else they want to say? I want to say hi to Sonny and Vicente and tell them I love them. Yes. Hi. Where are they? Are they still there? I don't yes. see them. Hmm. I don't see them. No, I think they signed off. Yeah. Oh, I was going to welcome new listener, Alejandra. Uh, I think she signed off too. Yeah, yeah, she signed off too. All right. I love y'all. Love y'all. Love you. Love you. Bye. 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 Bye.
Yes, yes, Delphia. Delphia. Love you, Delphia. Love you, Delphia. Love you, Delphia. Bye, ladies. Love you, Love you all. Have a beautiful day. Great Bye. 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 Love you, Maria. Love you, Robin. Love you, Bernie. Love you, Love you, Linda. Love you all. Love you, Kennedy. Love, love all you, of you, guys. Nicole. Grandma love loves you, you so Emily, much. Uncle Matt. Love you, Marielle. Love you, Marielle. Love you, Grandma. Love you, love you Aunt Marlene. Love you. Miss you, Aunt Marlene. I haven't you, seen you in you. ages. Love you, Melissa. Love you, Mom. Love you. Hey, love you, Marlene. Love you, love Linda. You. Don't forget Matthew. I have uh, your gift. I'm not going to show it to you, though. Don't look. I got a gift <laughs> or Linda. I got a gift for Linda. Oh, okay. Oh, for your birthday day, Linda. Yeah, I got to remind me to bring it on the uh, graduation. Okay. <laughs> I will. <laughs> okay. I love you, Melissa. I love you, Emmeline. I feel like I haven't seen you in forever. No, no. I'll see I you seen at the Chrissy graduation. since the last time I saw you. I'll see you at the graduation. Okay. When's yeah, the graduation again nice. next month? Yeah. yeah. I'll let, I'll give you I'll okay. send you the details. Bye. Love you. Love, Love you. you. Bye. 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 Bye.